So when we are talking geometrically, the Kramer's rules can be defined as a method to identify an unknown input vector landing on known values after the transformation. So that was the equation as you can see from the equation. So let's try to see what that means. Let's say we have an unknown vector which is here and if you want to you know transform that unknown vector to a known vector right. So we have this unknown vector and this is the known vector right. So after making a transformation of this vector after transforming this vector by a matrix it should land this unknown vector should rotate and it should land you know and it will get converted into this known vector that is there right. So this is essentially taken by the transformation this transformation is done by the matrix that we have okay and this is essentially uh, the geometric interpretation of you know solving a set of linear equation. What is this unknown vector which when multiplied by the a matrix transformed into the known vector okay and question is how do we find the solution uh, we have seen some solution approaches previously also but today we are focusing on the Kramer's rule and trying to understand the geometric intuition behind the Kramer's rule to solve for this problem okay so let's get started let's consider a 2d example because it will be easier to depict and geometrically understand it so if you take a 2d example right we have this two dimensional or two equations in two variables right. So I, from here I can write that you know the coefficient of 0x minus 2. Now I can you know simplify that in the you know matrix into vector multiplication form and that is going to be equal to the vector. So in this overall equation the x represent the x vector represent the unknown vector, m represent the transformation matrix okay, and v is the known vector which the unknown vector will get transformed to after multiplication with the m matrix that is there right. So after transformation of m the input vector x is basically get converted and lands on the vector v and that is the way to understand what problem we are solving when we are solving a set of linear equations that we have okay. Now the transformation information when we are talking about Kramer's rule is you know uh, comes into picture with the help of the determinants that are there in picture. So a determinant is a factor but how much things are changing after transformation and this is something we discussed geometrically in previous lectures and so what, what we want to do is we have want to have used that notion and use that the area before and after transformation is considered the basis vector and the input vector is to uh, use to identify the unknown solution. So how can we use this you know idea of determinants uh, to solve for this class of problem let's try to see uh, intuitively what happens here okay. So let's see first what is the parallelogram that is defined by the first basis vector i and the input vector x okay. So if I have unknown vector x right and I have the first you know basis vector i because this is a two dimensional problem so we will have two basis uh, vectors i and j and let's say this is i which is the first bit vector basis vector and this is the unknown vector that is there. So let's see the parallelogram that will be constructed by using this i cap and the unknown vector x. If, if you look into this, this will be the essentially the parallelogram that will be formed by the unknown vector and the basis vector. So if that is the case right, the area of this parallelogram is going to be equal to base multiplied by the overall height right and this is the formula that we know for any parallelogram so basically you know this will be the y that is there and i since this is a unit vector right so the base is essentially going to be 1 times y which is like the location of you know the second coordinate of x vector that will give me the area of this overall parallelogram okay and why we have 1 here because you know i is a unit vector so the length of this unit vector is going to be 1. Okay, well as length of this is going to be y, so y times 1 is going to be the area of this parallelogram that we have. Okay, so now this will be equal to y, so we can use that as a basis. Now let's also consider a parallelogram that is defined by forming this j second unit vector and x. So if that's the case, you know the parallelogram that will be formed by using this two basis vector will be the parallelogram that you see here. Now we can also find out the area of this parallelogram and similar to what we have done in the previous slide you can see this will be one unit length right and that is the base or times you know essentially you know, the height. 
So if you look into the height, the height will be, for this parallelogram, the height will be given by this dimension, which is essentially equal to the x of the unknown vector. So we will have 1 times x, 1 because we have j, which is a unit vector, so the length of this j is 1, and then x will give us the area of this parallelogram that we have. So now what we did is in the, you know, original dimension, the, even before transformation, we basically considered the area of the parallelogram formed by the unit vector and the unknown vectors. And there are two parallelograms you can form, and we have essentially given you the equation of these two parallelograms that you see here. Okay. So now let's revisit something that we have already discussed, uh, you know, when discussing the determinant, that, you know, determinants essentially is a measure of how exactly things are extending or shrinking or the magnitude of shrinking or extension after the transformation. And that is what is captured by the determinant. So if you take a determinant of a matrix, it will, you know, basically give you this measure of how much things have shrinked or extended, right? So, you know, again, recapping that figure, if you have this original two vectors, which defines and which encloses an area, and if you do a transformation of these two vectors by multiplying them by a transformation matrix, that area is going to maybe extend or shrink, but the factor by which this area is increasing or shrinking is basically captured by or encapsulated by or measured by or, you know, you know, uh, you sort of imbibed by the determinant. And that's the geometrical meaning of the determinant that is there.